an exciting thing happened over this past weekend. This channel hit 100,000 subscribers. So obviously I am over the moon and happy about that. I just feel so grateful. I wanted to first thank all of you. You guys watch, you guys have subscribed. I would not be here without you, my viewers. In honor of 100,000 subscribers, I thought, let's do a Q&A, answer some questions, get a little personal, and also just go over a couple things and the future of this channel. Okay, I wanted to talk just a little bit about some of the things that have happened in videos that people have commented about that I just think are funny or things that I noticed that maybe you guys didn't notice or maybe one or two people noticed. <laughs> so. Let me go through this. In the video where I followed along with Rachel while she was the wedding coordinator that day, I went in with, to Philadelphia with her and it was fun. But I walk into the room where the ceremony is going to happen and I sang a song. This is what I was supposed to sing. Da, 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 da. You know, here comes the bride. What I sang was. Da, 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 da. So that is obviously the graduation song. <laughs> so one person noticed. I don't know if did any of you notice that. Same video. In Philadelphia, there's a building with a statue on the top, very well known in Philadelphia. And I said, There's Ben Franklin. Hey, Ben. And it's not Ben Franklin, it's actually William Penn. And I blew that. I totally blew it. Somebody called me out on it, and I was like, Oh my goodness, I guess, yep, that's what I did. <laughs> Same video. Where the video took place was in a Macy's, um, which used to be the old Wanamaker, I think it was called, a department store. And that is the same department store where the film Mannequin was filmed. It was back in the 1980s. I loved this movie. Loved this movie. I didn't really realize it until later. Somebody mentioned it and I'm like, you're right. I totally, totally forgot about it. So yeah, Mannequin was filmed there. In my video, 20 things I no longer buy, which completely went viral. It's over 800,000 views at this point. Couple things in that. First off, I link as part, actually it's a YouTube link and then I link it in the description, a coffee maker. Cause I say in it, I will no longer buy um, Keurigs or K-cups or anything like that. Oh my word, how many people commented, well, I would never buy a $350 coffee maker. I don't know how many people commented about how expensive this coffee maker was. <laughs> I'm like, that was such not the point. The point was I don't buy these. Just because I like an expensive coffee maker and it's an amazing coffee maker, and that's the reason I mentioned it. It is an amazing coffee maker. It makes great coffee. And some people are like, I'm good with my $20 coffee. I'm like, fine, if you love your $20 coffee maker, have at it, like, I don't care. But it was just so funny how many people commented about the coffee maker. I I'm like, okay, like, it's fine, don't buy it then. <laughs> I wasn't trying to get you to buy it. Same video, of course I do this mistake in a video that goes viral. I was showing, uh, video footage of me shopping at home goods going down the aisles and i don't remember what my point was but i think i say i no longer shop in these aisles or something like that and i put it across the screen of course i spelled aisles like an island aisles instead of aisles going down the aisles and of course spell, spell check will not catch that because i spelled aisles correctly i just used the wrong aisles Oh, of course I didn't catch it. And I don't know how many, I don't know how many people have commented at this point about my mistake. <laughs> Bobby, of course you choose the viral video to make this mistake. I'm like, okay, I'm not perfect. Let's talk about the future of mindful midlife. I pretty much am going to be doing mostly the same things. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed that I have started doing more vlogs. When I do a vlog, I don't do a vlog of just a day, unless I say a day in my life. If you have not watched a vlog, maybe you're not a vlog person, not everybody is, I would encourage you to, to, to just try a couple. I try to make my vlogs not just be a chain of events. I try to show the things that I do on a regular basis, or if it's an event, I do show the event. 
Um, but I also try to make it so that it's useful information. I try to always include a few different things. I try to include just mundane life, life, what, you know, what I would do during that week or whatever. Um, I try to show something where I'm either eating healthy, like I'll show a recipe that I tried or I, um, a recipe that somebody gave me or I saw on Instagram. I might show some kind of exercise, like we might go bike riding or I might be at the gym or walking. I try to also incorporate some way of simplifying my life, like if I'm organizing something, I'm decluttering something, or I'm trying to simplify an aspect of my life, I will show you that. And then I also try to incorporate some kind of beauty, like if there is a new beauty product that I'm trying or I just wanna to talk to you about, I will incorporate that. So kind of just all the aspects of the things that I usually talk about in a separate video, I talk about all of those things, but I incorporate it into a vlog. Does that make sense? So. If you haven't tried the vlogs, I would encourage you to try them because there's probably something in there that you would connect with. Okay, while I am getting ready, I will answer more beauty related questions that I got. I probably will not get to all of these. Have you always had longer hair? I would love to see a few hairstyles you've tried. <laughs> No, I have not always had longer hair. In fact, my hair growing up in high school was very short. My high school years were in the 1980s. I had the um, Dorothy, no, not Dorothy Hamill, what was her name? Mary Lou Retton. I had her hair cut for many years. When my husband and I met, I had very short hair. While we were dating, or probably more during our engagement, I grew my hair out. Not sure why I did that. I guess I thought like a bride should have long hair. <laughs> I don't know. It was pretty much the first time I'd had longer hair since I was a kid. So yeah, um, not always had longer hair. What type of concealer do you recommend for dark circles? I don't have anything on my face right now except skincare and I just put a primer on. I don't really have very dark circles. I do have like bluer here and some darkness. I've raved for years about Koki, um, the Koki Corrector Be Bright in Peach. It's not easy to find. I will give you links below of everything. I also really do like the Clinique one in Peach. This one's not as peach as this one. So this one will correct stronger blues. I don't use a lot. See how it just takes down that blue? Yeah. So that's my favorite for corrector. My favorite concealer right now is two of them, actually. I told you I used Koki Be Bright and Peach, the corrector. I also like Koki um, Concealer. These are kind of like the same kind of formula, but I think it does well. It doesn't dry my under eye. It doesn't crease constantly. Like it will set down if you use some powder. So I do like those. My favorite probably is, and I'll use it today, is Fiera. This one is a thicker foundation, not foundation, concealer. I've talked about it a little bit on my channel, but you can see it's like really thick and I put way too much there. What is your all time favorite light to medium coverage foundation? Your holy grail. <laughs> I have a few. I just have recently raved about this one from CoverGirl. You can see I've used a lot of it. This is the Simply Ageless Skin Perfector Essence. This is very light. It's buildable, kind of. I don't think it's like hugely buildable, but this could go under another foundation as well. I love this for my everyday look when I'm not dealing with any extra imperfections. My other go-to one, which I'm gonna use today, is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear. It's definitely a light to medium. I do think it can be built up to a true medium. I also love, oh, I don't have it on me, um, the L'Oreal True Match. Um, there's True Match and then there's True Match Nude. I do love them both. Um, I think I like True Match better and that one's a good, I would say that's more medium, but if you used a dampened sponge, you could definitely get a more sheer, lighter coverage with that one. When will, when will, this? Uh, I got this a couple questions. When do you, when, okay, I can talk. <laughs> 
when will you do another makeup video with Rachel? She is a peach. <laughs> Cindy. She, Cindy's from the UK and she's sweet. Um, and then I had another person ask me the same question. Will you and Rachel be doing any makeup videos together again? I don't know. I showed Rachel the question and she's like, should we? And I said, yes, but when would ever you be free? My daughter is a very active person. She loves to collect friends. She has a very active career. I don't know. Maybe, maybe again, I, I just, jury's out on that one. Do you get Botox? If you do, how often? No, and clearly I do not get Botox. <laughs> I had it done once and I absolutely hated it. I have naturally hooded eyes, like I was born with hooded eyes. It made them feel heavy and I th I've i heard that that's a common thing that can happen when you have naturally hooded eyes. I wanted to just take my eyes and just raise them up. <laughs> I, hey, I could not wait for it to wear off. Any tips to get the scalp to stop producing so much oil? <laughs> With three question marks. I don't have that issue most of the time. I did have it at one time. I'm not sure why. I guess my hormones were changing. Okay, I'm gonna finish this eyebrow and come back. Here's my recommendations when I was having the issue of it getting greasy faster. First off, I always wash my hair twice. No matter when, whatever, I always, always wash hair twice. So when you do your conditioner, keep it off of, especially right here, because that's where, at least for me, I get the greasiest here and then right obviously around, along my, my hairline, I should say. When I was going through that really oily stage, what I would do is I'd wash my hair and then I would condition all of it. I'd rinse it all out and I would go back with a dab, just a tiny dab of just regular shampoo. And I would literally just wash my hair just right, right here. And then I would make sure I'd rinse it going this direction so it wouldn't, the soap wouldn't go into the rest of my hair. And then I would just make sure everything was out. And that seemed to prolong, you know, not like another day. I obviously use um, dry shampoo. The other thing is try not to touch your hair as much. That is definitely <laughs> something you should try. I actually think these things help. I can put it on and it keeps my hair off of that skincare and it going onto my hair. I don't want that to happen because a lot of it is moisturizers, oils, serums, things that my hair does not need from my face. So that's another tip is get one of these. We like these because they don't crease your hair uh, like a clip or a headband, a normal headband would do. They're usually too tight. These are really loose, they're bigger, and so your hair just doesn't get dented or feel weird afterwards. What sunblock for face and body do you like? And what self-tanner will you be using this summer? For face, my favorite probably three are, I love CeraVe 30. Um, it's the multi ultra light moisturizing lotion with SPF 30. I also love the Neutrogena Ultra Sheer 60 plus. Those are both chemical. For a mineral, I like the La Roche Posay Ethios 50. So this is tinted. Eucerin Sensitive Mineral Face. This is 35, and it obviously is tinted as well for tanning. I like to tan my face. I still love the Tanologist. I've been switching to the light version. Over the winter, I use that, and as the summer's beginning, I'm using the light. I'll probably at some point switch to medium. I just take this and I mix it in with my moisturizer at night and do it everywhere. I, I mean, everywhere, on my ears, down my neck. I always go down to my chest and behind my neck because you don't want a line here. <laughs> so all the way back and get it in mixed really well. Always wash your hands. For body, I am still a Jergens girl. I love this, this is buildable, and you really do get a good payoff for this. It says it's firming, I don't, I'm sorry, but there's a lot to firm on this body, so probably I would never see the benefits of that. I so wish, but 
I love this and it is buildable. In between when I take a shower, I love this in the summer months just to keep that glow happening. So this I put on right after the shower, I get out, I'm still wet. This goes on all over and then I towel dry and I try not to rub it off. I try to more like pat it off, but get fully dry. So this helps maintain in between. What is your favorite drugstore mascara, both waterproof and regular? Drugstore mascara, hands down, the um, L'Oreal Voluminous, and I like it in waterproof. I don't really have a favorite non-waterproof because I never use non-waterproof. I always use waterproof. I need help with eyebrows. <laughs> Common question for women who are over 50. Mine are very short, coarse, and mostly gray. I have been trimming them and filling with Maybelline Tattoo Eyebrow Studio. I have noticed that some people shave them and then draw them in. I think that might be drastic for me. Thoughts? Yes, I would not shave them. Don't, don't shave them. I will say when I first started doing my makeup for the first time, really when I turned 50, I had no clue really what I was doing for eyebrows and it really takes some practice. So my recommendation is practice until you know what you're doing. The other recommendation I would do is spend a little money if you have it and go to a makeup artist and say, I need to learn how to do my eyebrows. Have him or her work with you on what products would be best. Should you use a pencil? Should you use a powder, a pomade? Like there's so many options. Have them fix, like tweeze them the way they should be tweezed and maybe wax them a bit if they need it and have them get the shape for you and then have them show you how to do it because eyebrows are so different. We're all just so unique. And don't just have them put it on you, have them show you how to do it so you actually do it. So spend your money there and I think you might be a lot happier with how your eyebrows look after some time of practicing. Which cosmetics do you feel make the biggest impact for a quick makeup look when you are in a hurry? Um, hands down, brows and mascara. If I could only, okay, if I only could do one, like only one thing on my face, I'd probably do eyebrows because eyebrows lift everything up. So I would do very light, like I would not do a strong eyebrow because eyebrows with no other makeup look just too strong. So I do a very light eyebrow. If I could do two, the next one would definitely be mascara. All right, we're gonna talk about questions about YouTube or more businessy kind of things or you know about me as a YouTuber. Would you ever consider doing a meet and greet? Um, I have thought about it. I've never considered it. So I'm not sure if that's the same thing. Like I've thought, would this be something I would do? And pretty much right now the answer is no. If you watch my vlogs at all, you will know that one of them was titled something like social anxiety. I suffer from social anxiety. I, without a doubt, I have that. I don't have a debilitating case of it or anything like that. I just really struggle in situations where I am the center of attention. At a meet and greet, I would be the center of attention and I would feel so, I, 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 I don't know. I would hate to have everyone staring at me. Like that would just be so uncomfortable. <laughs> I'd rather have you all just come over for dinner <laughs> and we're lunch and we'd have a fun get together that way. I, you know, and I'd have something to do and I'd make you all work and help, help me out getting things done in the kitchen, <laughs> but I can't do that. So at this point, no, I, I, I just don't see me doing that. And I would literally be so afraid nobody would show up. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, I got this question a few times, and the question is, hi Bobby, what made you decide to start filming YouTube videos? Was it difficult to start? I'm thinking of starting myself, thank you. I decided to start because when I turned 50, I, I just knew my skin was changing. I was never a huge makeup person at that point. So it, some of these go together. So first off, my skin was changing, I needed to learn how to put makeup on. When I turned 50, I also 
all of a sudden felt like I was old, like not overnight, but you know, around that time. And I felt like I don't want to be old yet. And I don't want to act old yet. And one thing about common, I think about people who are acting old, I don't know, you know, you can put whatever number that is on there is they kind of are like, well, I'm not going to learn anything new. I'm not going to try anything new. I'm too old to do that. I'm too old to try this thing new. I'm, tr I, you know, my time is past on that. And so I was like, no, I I'm not doing that. I'm not going to act old. I'm, uh, I'm not going to decide that I'm too old to do something that's new. I was wanting to start a, a business actually, and my husband wasn't on board for it. And um, he was willing to do it because he knew I wanted to, but I knew he wasn't. I had, at the simultaneously of all this happening, I would started watching, I had started watching YouTube because my daughter Rachel had watched it and she learned all this makeup stuff. And there wasn't very much, this is 2017, there wasn't very much about makeup for women my age. I think Angie of Angie Hot and Flashy, she was one of the only ones out there. I'm sure there was other ones that were real small channels, but nobody who I was like, oh, I connect with her. And that was frustrating me. And the more I watched of different YouTubers, younger ones, I thought, well, I could do that. I could, I I'm sure I could learn how to do that. <laughs> so, so I literally for about three or four months, researched how to be a YouTuber, how to film, edit, like all those things. And I decided to launch my channel on in April of 2017, so seven years ago, basically. I had such a hard time, oh my heart, my friend Terry is a photographer and she was encouraging me, like you can do it. And I was emailing her, texting her, I'm going, how do I get the footage that I put on my phone from here to my iPad? I literally had no clue how to do this. That's how I, I, green I was. I knew nothing. And I had tried everything and, and she was my last resort. I wish I had contacted her first. She's like, oh, you airdrop. I'm like, what's airdrop? <laughs> I had not a clue in the world what an airdrop was. She's like, oh, you just airdrop from one device to the other. I'm like, oh, now on iPhone, I, I, I think Android can do the same thing, but I'm not sure. Oh my heart, I literally cried. Then I edited my first video, actually for my first year, I edited everything on my iPad on, um, what's it called, movie, iMovie, iMovie. And I remember I had it on my iPad, everything was edited. And I'm like, how do I get it from here to YouTube? <laughs> hours, I'm talking hours of trying to figure this thing out. I finally figured it out and I uploaded it to YouTube and I got an email back from YouTube. Congratulations, you've uploaded your first video. I bawled, I, cause I was so tired at that point and I was so spent because all my brain power was used trying to get this stinking video. I hadn't even launched it yet. It was just getting it on the channel. I was just like, so anyways, long story short, obviously 300 and something videos later, almost 400. Um, yeah, we finally, I launched and I, I remember texting my friend Terry going, it's up. I can't believe I did it. So the reason was I didn't want to be old. I, I wanted to try something new. I also was frustrated by my skin and I knew other women my age were probably as frustrated as me. My first video wasn't beauty at all. It was comparing literally this loopy case to a pop socket. Hey, Bobby Copy here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to do a product review of the pop socket against the loopy case. I don't know why I launched with that one. I do not know, but it had to do with being over 50 because of arthritis. This made it so that it didn't hurt my fingers to take this places. Does that make sense? They say, the experts say, in order to have a very successful channel, you need to niche down. In other words, you need to have very specific, like you are all beauty. You are all simple living you are all health whatever and i've kind of bucked at that because i don't want to talk about any one of those things exclusively 
I want to talk about being a woman in her past 50 and everything that kind of goes with that. I know my channel would have grown faster if I had niched down more specifically, but I also wouldn't like it as much and I probably would have burned out. So I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. And that's why I incorporate all of those things into vlogs because that's my life. Do you regret quitting your job? I worked at a, the Christian school where my kids worked, um, I mean, went to where my kids graduated from. I had worked there for almost 15 years and I was the executive administrative assistant to the um, middle school and upper school principal and the head of school. Um, and I was also an event planner for like their major event with big name people like George W. Bush and, um, oh man, who else? Kirk Cameron. Oh man, my brain. Bethany Hamilton, Soul Surfer, the one who had her arm bit off by a shark. Um, many names. And I was the event planner for those. So I did that. End of 2022, I quit and to go full time on YouTube. Do I regret it? No. Do I miss it? Yes. I, I absolutely, I miss the people and some of the job. I loved my job. So it was a hard decision. I loved who I worked for. I loved my bosses. I loved the people I worked with. I loved them and I still see them periodically. Um, but yeah, I don't regret quitting, but I do miss them. Have you done other work before this? Do you have a college degree? I do have a college degree. It's in travel and tourism. I wanted to be a travel agent. So I just went to community college and got my degree then. Um, oh my word, have I had I, let's see. I was a strawberry picker at one point at a farm, McDonald's. I was a nanny for four years. I worked at Marriott for a year after I got my degree. I worked at Marriott for a year as the front desk. After that, went to a limousine company as a like a um, receptionist slash, I guess, secretarial kind of thing for a year. Quit that because I wanted to start a family or we wanted to start a family and they allowed smoking. At that point, smoking was allowed <laughs> and I didn't want to be in a place where I was pregnant and smoking. People were smoking around me. So I stopped and I went to a trucking company and I was an administrative assistant to like the executives um, there. I worked there for quite a few years and that's when I got pregnant with my son Ryan. Quit that and then I was, I had no job for eight months besides being a full-time mom obviously, um, which is way harder. <laughs> and at, when he was eight months old, um, I became a creative memories consultant, which is a multi-level marketing um, company. And I loved it. It's, they, it was scrapbooking and I grew my team up to 50 people underneath me and I loved them and I loved it, but I just got tired of being in sales. I just didn't want to do it anymore. So I took a little bit of time off and then Rachel and Ryan's, my kid's school was hiring an administrative assistant to work there. And that was like the perfect thing because I would get a break on tuition because it's a private school and not a very cheap one. I think that's it. Oh, I worked in Colorado, I forgot. I did work in Colorado for a winter and a summer. I worked as a, um, I guess it was a dining room hostess slash, we would, we would did everything. It was like, you had to do everything if you worked there. Um, up in the Sangre de Cristo, Sangre de Cristo mountain range which is an hour west of Pueblo. I worked in the mountain range at like a Christian camp resort kind of thing. So I worked there and then I also worked down in Cape May, New Jersey as a housekeeper um, for a place called the Christian Admiral, which is now demolished, but it was this massive building. And I worked there for just a summer. So yeah, I've had a lot of jobs. Let's get to some personal questions. I thought it would be fun to film where I filmed my very first video. I sat right here because I didn't have any lights. My dining room felt very bright, although today is such a gloomy day, so I'm not getting much light out of this. How did you meet your husband and what is your secret to a happy marriage? God bless. Doug and I actually met at church. Um, I had just become a nanny 
um, not just, I'd been a nanny for, I don't know, six months or something, and I started going to the church where he grew up. I met a family that was friends with him. He was actually at college at the time he was doing his senior year, and they kept talking about Doug. And I didn't know who he was. In fact, I couldn't remember his last name constantly. Then I'm like, who is this Doug? And they're like, copy. He was coming home for college. At the time, I was interested in this family's son. And we kind of dated, not really, but kind of dated. And he introduced me to Doug at technically a volleyball game at our church. And then Doug moved away to Florida. Um, because he graduated and got a job down in Florida. Um, he lived there only like six months and hated it. Came back and lived with his parents and found a new job nearby. And I was still a nanny. And we just became really, really good friends. We dated for two years. We are engaged for nine months and then married in, in 1992. What is our secret to a happy marriage? <laughs> well, you're making an assumption there, but we do have a happy marriage. Obviously, we have our difficulties like any marriage does. By far, the, the key to our marriage being okay and a happy one is the fact that both of us have a relationship with God on our own, and then our marriage is based on biblical principles. Our lives are impacted by our relationship with God beyond anything else. And so both of us have personal relationships with God and then our relationship to each, each other is impacted greatly by that. So that's just number one. I also will say that one of the biggest things that I think is good for a marriage is having fun together and finding something that you have in common. Doug and I are very different. Um, Doug is a very soft-spoken, quiet, does not have a mean bone in his body. He just doesn't. He is one of the hardest per working people I know. He will do anything that he needs to do for our family. He works hard in his job and he's just a sweet, kind, gentle person. One thing we have in common greatly is we love to go biking together. We love to explore towns together. We did that a lot in our dating relationship and that has continued, not so much the towns as much, but definitely biking. Um, we started biking together when we were dating and um, we took a little hiatus for quite a few years raising our family, but we went back to it really over 2020 during the pandemic. We went, we got biking again and have not looked back. We love it and it is our thing that we do together. So I encourage you, if you don't have a lot in common with your spouse, to find something that you can do together that's fun. Does your son live nearby? Is he still in school or has he graduated? Okay, my son's name is Ryan and he does not live with us anymore. He moved out this past November to his own apartment and it's uh, about a half hour away, so he's relatively nearby. And I'm not gonna say pretty much any more about him only because my son is very private. He does not like anything to be said about him. He won't be shown in my videos at all. He just is very, very private. And so I honor that. Um, I don't push that at all, so. <laughs> I will not say more. Um, my husband also does not like to be on my videos too much. I get him in there a tiny bit, but I don't push it. My daughter, Rachel, on the other hand, is like, yep, let's go, let's, you know, she's fun. She likes to do all that stuff, so. <laughs> does Rachel still want to go to school to be a wedding planner? Um, she did that. She got a degree um, in, it's not called wedding planning, it's called event planning corporate something. I don't know exactly what the title of her. She got a um, AA degree and she did graduate with that and she uses it kind of. Um, I, I think it was more she just wanted to, she wanted to accomplish that and that was big for her. Pretty much, I mean, I'm talking like almost the same month that she graduated, she came to my husband and I and said, I want to go to esthetician school. <laughs> so she had literally started one and then went the following semester. She went to an amazing school. What is the name of it? Metro Beauty Academy. And it was probably one of the best drum beauty academies we toured, because we toured a few of them to see which one to go to. And just an amazing 
place. She loves her job as a medical esthetician. So she works at a dermatology slash med spa. So it's just, it's not a med spa by itself. It's connected with a dermatologist. She's done with school. She's like, I don't wanna do any more. This question, it made me happy that you asked this. And it made me happy that so many of you, I think it was on Facebook that this question was asked. Many of you chimed in with an answer and I just thought, I love that. I love that the community helps each other. How do I pray to God? Do I pray to God the Father, Jesus? God the Father through Jesus? Would you believe that I am almost 50 years old and I am still trying to figure this out as a practicing Catholic? Nobody has been able to sufficiently answer the question. As a woman in Christ, will you please help? I love this question. <laughs> okay, I will preface this by saying I am no theologian. I am no Bible scholar or anything like that. I will just tell you how I believe. I believe that you don't need to make it very complicated. God the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you can pray to all three of them. I usually say just God. Um, or father. Honestly, there's no right or wrong way to pray. God knows your heart and that's what matters. You could pray with flowery language. Everything just sounds beautiful. And I know people who do this and their hearts are in the right place. I also know that there are plenty of people, Jesus called them out in the Bible, they were called the Pharisees, and they prayed with beautiful flowery language. They sounded so amazing and their heart was nowhere near close to the Lord. So God looks at your heart. He doesn't look at your flowery language. He doesn't care. You talk to God like he is your friend because that's what he is and he wants to meet you where you are and he will meet you where you are. So. Prayer can be an ongoing conversation. As I'm doing something, I think of somebody, I could be like, oh Lord, such and such is going through a difficult time right now. Would you please heal them? Will you please be with them, comfort their hearts, comfort their family, um, supply this need, whatever it is. And it can be short as that. And it could be as long as an hour long prayer. It, it doesn't really matter. Obviously there's the Lord's prayer, which is not something you have to say like verbatim, you can. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. Um, in fact, that's great. Go ahead and do it. Many people do. But it also is a guide of how to pray. But it's not like you have to hit all those things in order to be a successful prayer. I love that um, Joyce7310 answered this and said, thank you, I was brought up to pray in Jesus' name. I believe he hears us regardless of our exact wording. Exactly he hears us. It's not like God is up there going, okay, did she say the right things? Was it checking it off? It's not what's happening. Again, he looks at your heart and if your heart is seeking him out and if your heart is wanting to please him and to have him be part of your life, he is going to meet you there. And it doesn't matter exact words at all. It matters where your heart is. Okay, I'm done preaching. <laughs> I find it so hard to stay consistent with working out at this stage of life. Do you? Yes, I do. Very, very much. I've just started trying to do a more consistent, like 30 minutes a day, at least five days a week of moving my body in some way, either a walk, working out at the gym, going for a bike ride, something. I've learned to pretty much not try to beat myself over the head and think that I'm not successful if I miss a day. Um, but I have certainly not mastered the whole consistency key. I definitely struggle just like anybody else. What shoes are you wearing on your walks and how do you like the hokas? Well, you just answered my question, the question you asked, I wear hokas. Um, I also have a pair of Skechers that I wear. Not nece I'm not necessarily sold on either of them and the Skechers are fine. The hokas are okay. I don't think, I don't get all the hype, um, but they're okay. But that's what I'm wearing. Are you still doing the Mediterranean diet? How is it going? Um, no, I'm really not. I'm doing more just real food, as close as I possibly can to be at real food. I mean, I had a little pasta today at lunch and trying to go more like a little bit low carb, but I would not, I'm not anywhere near keto. 
and if it's carbs, I'm trying to do um, carbs that are whole food carbs, like fruit and vegetables and brown rice and maybe farro, um, those kind of things. So are you still doing intermittent fasting? I actually haven't talked about intermittent fasting on this channel at all. I've been doing that since October. I will probably talk at great length about it later in another video, I'm not sure when. Yes, I am doing it. I try to do about 16, eight, so 16 hours with no food and, and eating with an eight hour window. So that seems to work okay for me. Have I lost drastic amounts of weight? No. <laughs> so I am proof positive that just IF alone does not necessarily mean you're going to lose weight. If you like these kind of chatty videos, I'm going to link one right here that I did quite a while ago. And again, thank you so much for being part of this channel, being a subscriber if you are one. And if you're not, feel free to push that button. I'll see you in another one. God bless.